in most parts of Australia, you can't ride your push bike to the corner store without first being required to don a helmet. Yet in the hurly-burly of women's lacrosse, players are actually banned from wearing helmets. With the prospect of injured players being able to take legal action against officials, the game's administrators are begrudgingly giving ground on the issue. So this got to where, look, all of this stuff is all rubbish that we keep hearing. The only way we can prevent these sort of injuries is to let girls have head protection. It's strictly a non-contact sport. The catch being, there's undoubtedly an element of risk. But still for the players, simply strapping on a helmet for protection is a provocative act. Helmets are banned by national and international rules. But even in the conservative world of women's lacrosse, there are rule breakers, trailblazers who are rocking the foundations of this once genteel sport. Well, the problem is at the moment that uh, administrators are not prepared to make a rule change to allow players the right to protect themselves. South Australia actually can't wear helmets in South Australia. But they do, they say they've changed their constitution. It's, non it's not a constitutional matter, it's a rules matter. So basically it's a rebellion. Correct. So if the men have come up with different solutions, why on earth don't you have an open mind to considering the same solutions? Well, I actually think we were probably a little bit of an impediment to that because we brought in the headgear, the, the oh, helmets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that was a problem is they didn't listen to anything we said because they saw helmets where immediately we were playing men's it's lacrosse. Right. Instead, we were talking about, yeah, there's a safety issue in itself. <laughs> we just don't protect that we heads. didn't have to, we did not have yeah. to um, change the, that's what I was just talking about, about the brush rule versus any no, hit no, to the no, head no. can be a hit to the head. Same. You know, like, yeah. we can still have the imaginary bubble, oh. but actually have something that really does protect you. And I think because we did that, Everything else that we did, they discounted as yeah. being, oh, you want to be like the men. Yeah. Instead of actually going, no, we are actually educators who see the game exactly as you said, for how do people get maximum participation? How do we keep the game free-flowing and lots of scoring? Yeah. And so we were trying to do that by actually... But because we put the helmets on, I think at about the same time, yeah. I actually think it confused everyone yeah. and they saw well, distracted the them both majorly. Distracted them. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, so. and that was their focus, that whatever they had to do, they had to stop this whole helmets thing. Yes. You know? Okay, uh, but also one of the things that bound us together uh, was uh, that we thought it was very important to, to protect girls' heads, for example. Uh, to question the rules were, that were there uh, in the game internationally at that time um, and, and for which we were frowned upon th throughout the world. Okay, but uh, we fought for the right for girls to, to play protected, have their heads protected, and it was great that the whole South Australian community supported us. Uh, when we were playing and were using two hands, for example, that meant that initially changing hands and dodging, people would go to check. And in those days as well, there was more stick checking than what there is probably today. Whereas in those days, there, there was very few pushing fouls. It was more checking fouls and mischecking. So naturally, the ball's carried around your head. So people trying to check, people got hit on, on the head, che checked or whatever. Um, but also, because we were d delivering the ball harder and stronger, yeah. closely to the, nice. around here, face, you know, away from defenders, then if there was a deflection or whatever, the, the actual ball was having more of, and or causing more injury. The people that were injured in that manner did not, would not have wanted to wear a helmet. But shouldn't they have had the choice? No, no. This, this is where you have um, the semantics of the thing that's saying, should they have a choice? Well, no, they don't have a choice because there are structures in place to say, these are the equipment that you may wear. And if you don't wear those, well, you know, what right have you got to change it to something else? National umpiring director Jan Jackson believes a mouth guard, nose cone and eye goggles are the answer. Equipment currently allowed within the rules. Well, the reason why a nose guard and eye guards or a combination of those three, three things are not used is that one, is they're not available and two, because they don't provide the appropriate protection. So. The ground swirl in South Australia, even though all around the world there were women and girls being injured in the same way, the ground swirl was, um, was from here, from players, all right? And whenever you've got players trying to push up against administrators, etc., it's actually quite difficult. Whereas if you think about what happened in cricket, cricket changed like that in an instant because the administrators saw there was an issue 
And they said, everyone, you know, you wear batting helmets. Uh, that's well, what you do. had an option to wear a batting yeah, helmet. Yeah. Was different girls would have some head injuries and we'd be getting with the response, oh, the problem is um, uh, the players aren't skillful enough. Uh, the problems are uh, you're, you're with uh, the umpiring or something like that. There were different uh, issues yes, like this that yeah. were coming up. But then, uh, and so, so these were sort of the counter arguments that we were getting, which didn't quite make sense. South Australian players have been fighting for nearly a decade to have helmets introduced as optional equipment. They've been national champions for the last six years. And in 1990, the rebel state changed their constitution to override the national no helmet ruling. Since then, in South Australian domestic competition, helmets have been optional. So is it going to take basically a horrific injury before you think that helmets are necessary? Um, well, there are already horrific injuries that haven't changed it. Isn't that wrong? Isn't it wrong? <laughs> no, no, it was like, that's going back to what people wear, they are entitled to wear and don't. As a coach, I see accidents happen. I mean, this ball can travel up to 100 miles an hour. It's a bit difficult as an Australian coach, I suppose, uh, when the Australian Council hasn't allowed uh, helmets to be worn. But, uh, but I think as a coach, um, a coach of any sport, you, you've got to be primarily concerned with player safety. It is fact. I mean, injuries occur, serious head injuries occur and the wearing of a helmet will prevent those injuries and so we'll continue to fight for the player's right to wear a helmet in the game. But then a specific thing happened and this was at a state um, selection trial and it was one of my players Mandy Harley who was uh, playing in defence and she collided with a teammate who was Anne Gorman okay and and it wasn't even a checking thing they both collided their heads hit and as a result Mandy Harley had nine months of concussion. She was a university student at this stage. She had to stay in a darkened room for nine months. She couldn't study. She was, and, and it w was against all of the arguments. So there was nothing that rules could do. There was nothing that anything could do. This was an accident. This was something that happens in the nature of this high speed collision game. And so, this, and so that caused us to have special general meetings where it was basically the player movement uh, up against the administrators at that time, okay, and uh, and we had special general meetings that forced the rule changes. Um, it caused a revolution at the state team at that time because the current state coach, who, who you know was trying to maintain the traditions of the game, was very much against the helmets. And it was at that point that I was had to come in and say, well, I'll coach the state team again. I coached them a few years earlier, um, and and then it was a big problem because you had a divided player body. Yeah. Um, and but we coalesced um, under these new rules that where we were allowing girls at last to be able to. Yeah, play and with I think the, the significant thing is that it was the rule actually said you may not. It actually you may not wear a headgear. All right, and so we were pushing for having option. an option of doing that. And I mean, the legal advice certainly says that if if we have we have the responsibility um, for we have a duty of care over the players who play the game and uh, I think for us to be responsible we probably not only should allow girls to wear helmets we should be advocating that they wear helmets. There have been no case studies here in Australia but litigation is just a reality waiting to happen. Nothing's happened here as far as that goes but there are several of us that wear helmets and uh, I tell you if I lost my eye I'd probably be following because it's I mean it's really quite silly they don't allow something that's just so simple to change. Jenny Williams is a champion player and a champion of the helmet. She and her fellow South Australians have campaigned to raise awareness about the safety factors and the legal implications of ignoring them. Their work has resulted in dramatic attitudinal changes, particularly in South Australia. 63% of, uh, of all se senior players support um, the optional wearing of helmets. And so how can you, you justify not allowing them to wear the helmets? What would you tell people who say, you know, this is unbelievable? We don't think it's unbelievable and we don't believe that the rules that they are played now necessitate the wearing of helmets. What about having injuries on your conscience, though, on the, the national body's conscience? We haven't had any serious injuries, head injuries in Australia at all. Eye injuries and fractured cheekbones, they're fairly serious. People have been left with, with nasty um, legacies. There have been some injuries in women's lacrosse, but no more so in women's lacrosse than any other sport.
Wendy Pilts has compiled a list of at least 60 players who've suffered head and facial injuries, all of which would have been prevented had the player worn a helmet. But some officials discount that conclusion. Those who oppose helmets fear that the nature of the sport would change, that it would become more aggressive, a clone of the body contact style of men's lacrosse. They're a little scared that if we put helmets on that we'll allow the rules to change. But basically, if we keep the rules the same, it's not going to matter whether you've got a helmet on or not. It just basically protects you a little bit more. Australia probably leads the world in their style of play and they certainly are dynamic in what they do now. And yet at the moment they don't wear helmets. Because they're not allowed, they're leading the world in the style of play, yet we're not leading the world in our protective gear. This is the message I'm getting. I guess, Karen, it's a message that you're getting from a small number of people. Ironically, President Fiona Clark will present the facts, as told by Wendy Pilts, to an international meeting next week. And despite these badges, issued by a West Australian faction at the Nationals, the majority at a player forum this week voted to ask Council to give helmets a go at next year's Nationals. This week, the Croatians protested against the no helmet rule by warming up in their band headgear. We're warming up with them because it's a stance that we're taking. We would like people to be more aware of, um, of the fact that whether a player goes out with a mouth guard in or a helmet on, it makes no difference to the actual nature of the game. The game's exactly the same. Change is in the air, but it's happening slowly. According to the players, it's just a handful of officials who need convincing. They're in the dark ages, they're burying their head in the sand and they're not really prepared to, to look at the facts, to listen to players and to respond to the needs of players as they um, are requesting the right to be able to protect themselves. It's really comfortable. I like the fit of it. It's like tight so it doesn't like come off. But like it's not like squeezing my head too much. I know that it'll yeah. protect me so it gives me it more confidence. Yeah, you can do harder. your best on the field. I, I just like feel confident and going into games so like, oh bring it mister. Yeah, I like yeah, more than goggles. They're not too loose. They're really comfortable and they, they stay they, on. They'll never fall down like goggles. True. Yeah. And they're yeah. way more protective. I like the adjustable part and like the hair tie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I noticed that the rate at the time.